1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Are we there? Amen. You ready? Our spirits are open, ready to receive. Come on, let's read. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the presence of your spirit in this place this morning, God, that you have filled us, God, with exuberance and joyfulness, God. And we have been told this morning, God, through your psalmist, God, that it's already getting better. It's already getting easier for us, God, that you are moving and working on our behalf. So, Father, let us take these words, God, that has been ministered through song to heart, God. Let it make it personal for us. Now, Father, as we come to learn more about your word this morning, God, incline our ear to hear what you have for us on this day. God, that it would be life changing forever and ever and ever. In Jesus name, amen. You may be seated here, but listen to this. A man goes into a bar with his dog. He goes up to the bar and asks, now bear with me now, and asks for a drink. The bartender says, you can't bring that dog in here. The guy without missing the beat says, this is my seeing eye dog. Oh man, the bartender says, I'm sorry. Here, the first one's on me. The man takes his drink and goes to a table near the door. Another guy walks into the bar with a chihuahua. The first guy sees him, stops him, and says, you can't bring that dog in here unless you tell him it's a seeing eye dog. The second man graciously thanked the first man and continues to the bar. He asks for a drink. The bartender says, hey, you can't bring that dog in here. The second man replies, this is my seeing eye dog. The bartender says, no, I don't think so. They do not have chihuahuas as a seeing eye dog. The man pauses for a half second and replies, what? They gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> he was blind. He didn't know he got a dog yet. <laughs> All right. One more. But y'all love me afterwards. Everybody's not. All right. Taking a little, little liberty here. I, I did get a clearance from my wife to tell this joke, so it's not just me. She blamed me. I'll take blame for her. All right, all right, listen, listen. Then we're going to move on. It, it, it says, a, a, a mother took her little boy to church. While in church, the little boy said, Mommy, I have to pee. The mother said to the little boy, It's not appropriate to say the word pee in church. So from now on, whenever you have to pee, just, just tell me you have to whisper. The following Sunday, the little boy went to church with his father and during the service said to his father, Daddy, I have to whisper. The father looked at him and said, okay, just whisper in my ear. <laughs> Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We get that quick back in the spirit. Praise him. Jesus. Bless it. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, look at your name. Say, laughter is a good medicine. Laughter is a good medicine. So, so medicine. My thought today, again, as I uh, look to what God would have me to share with you all on Sunday, is God cares. God cares. Look at your neighbor and say, God cares. God cares. Let's get serious now. Okay, family, let's get serious. God cares. Uh, I should not be amazed, but there are times when I am still taken aback or surprised at um, mature Christians who are struggling with various anxieties and anxiousness, cares, and worries. Uh, to where you would think at their maturity level that they would know that God is working things out for them. And, and I, I too sometimes fall into that mindset where I am uh, uh, worrying uh, unnecessarily over something that's going on in my life. And, and, and so I, I, I'm not uh, excluded, if you will, from that. We all deal with that. No matter how long you've been saved, you're going to be dealing with some things in your life that may give you some anxiety or some worry. 
but and, and in that, listen, in that uh, anxiety or that worry, there, there oftentimes, maybe, or say sometimes, or maybe oftentimes comes that question that you may ask, does God really care? Does God really care? I was on YouTube this past week and listened to a worship song and I was just happening to look at some of the comments on the song and one of the ladies described or the lady who made the reply had listed out in a very long comment her, uh, her childhood life, how she was molested and um, molested at a young age and as she began, as she got older, it started happening with other uh, cousins, if you will, cousins, that was not, if you will, cousins, per her, her comments. And it's not until she came to know Jesus that she understood that God cares for her. So there is issues, family, and anxieties that you may even have in your very own life right now that you are worried about. And you're saying, God, do you really care? You may not ask the question directly, God, do you really care? But somehow, maybe in some indirect way or as an inferment, you're asking God, God, do you really care? When you say, God, are you going to provide for me, God, this need that I have, this bill that I got to get paid? You're asking in so many words, God, do you really care about me? Uh, and when something don't happen the way you want, it, you want it to go or when the money don't arrive, when you don't feel that God is an on time God, you begin to complain and murmur. And even in that, you're asking God in some kind of way, indirectly or in by infirmity, God, do you really care about me? God, why are you leaving me out here to fend for myself as it was? But I'm here to tell you this morning and to encourage you that God cares. I don't know your life story, especially those who are worshiping with us for the first time may come here and there. I don't know your life story. But there's one thing I do know, if you've been living long enough, there are some questions that you have in your mind and there's some issues that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, that you just need to hear this morning that God cares. He cares. But I'm not here this morning, listen, I'm not here this morning to magnify your problems. We're not going to sit here and spend for the next 25, 30 minutes talking about all your issues or the problems that we have. That is not my intention. My intention is to magnify God in front of your problems. You see, oftentimes, family, oftentimes, and I am guilty of it, we spend more time focusing on magnifying our problems and not the bigness of God. See, God, there's this song I've been singing, and my daughter and I have been singing uh, as of late, and I played it here a few times. It, it, it's, it's called Big. There's, there's the Planet Shaker ver version, and there's a full gospel fellowship version. It, 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 the, the lyrics go like this. It says, my God is big, so strong, so, fade it out, please, Brandon, so mighty. My God plans for me goes beyond my wildest dreams. You see, when we spend an inordinate amount of time focusing on our issues, the problems becomes magnified and the bigness of God, which has always exists, becomes small in our understanding, in our perspective. But we need to have a, 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 a healthy dose or be fully convinced and resolved in our spirit, in our mind, in our hearts, in our flesh that God cares. Perhaps there are some questions that you have been asking God, uh, maybe even yesterday during the past week and say, God, what's going to happen with this situation? God, what am I going to do? And, and maybe you're wondering how it's going to work out. Take comfort, listen, take comfort that God is well aware of your problem. He's well aware of your issue. He's well aware of your anxieties. He's well aware of your fear. And what he wants you and I to know and to get in our spirit this morning is that he cares for you. The latter part of verse 7 says, casting all your cares on him for he That's not just some words written down for, uh, 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 for the sake of encouragement, but it has much truth and validity to it. It is God's promise to us that if we cast our cares on him, that he will 
care for us. Let me speak just for a few moments on this word care in the casting all your cares on him. This word care is actually translated in the Greek as anxiety or said it differently, a better meaning means to be divided. When you are anxious for something and or have anxiety in your heart or have worry in your heart, then you are divided from that very thing that you are supposed to be focusing on. You ever had somebody, uh, you're having a good old time, a good old day, and, and you're going about your day, and you get a phone call from someone about something, and your whole uh, uh, day begins to change. That's because anxiety has set in, and now it has pulled you apart from the very thing that has you have a good day. But God tells us in his word, the inspired word of God written through Peter, that he cares for you. God cares. So listen, consider with me, consider Hannah. You find the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel. Hannah was the mother of the prophet Samuel. But before she became a mom, she was barren for many years. Uh, Hannah was the second wife or the other wife of Elkanah. Elkanah had a, another wife whose name was can't pronounce it. Start with a P. Peninani. Whatever it was. Penaya. Thank you. Penaya. Penaya had given Elkanah several sons and daughters. And here's uh, Penaya uh, provoking Hannah because she was barren. And each year they would go up to shallow to worship God. And when they would meet together, you will see, maybe you can imagine, Penana. Is that right? Banana. Banana. The other wife, we'll just say the other wife, the other wife just provoking, you know, bringing in all the kids, taking family photos in front of the shallow sanctuary, and here's Hannah over there. If you look at the text, it says that Hannah wept bitterly, that she was anguished in heart as she prayed to God. And I look at the story of Hannah, I say, surely in some way by inference or indirectly, Hannah was asking God, do you really care about me. Look, look at how this other wife is parading her kids around. Uh, look at how she's constantly provoking me. And, and, and more so, God, look at how I am bitter in soul, how I'm anguished in my heart. God, do you really care for me? But we see as the story goes that as she prayed to the Lord, that the Lord, after they left shallow, he went back and Elkanah knew his wife. You know the word knew his wife meant, right? Yeah, they had a good old time. And she conceived a child. Consider, consider with me, consider a, a, a lighter story, the, uh, the floating axe head. Here are uh, Elijah and his servants uh, uh, going to build a bigger space for them to rest in and to meet in. And as they are cutting down trees, they drop the axe head in the water. Oh, no, my master, he says to Elijah, I done lost the axe head. What am I going to do? The master said, the master said, tell me, show me where it's at. So he comes over and he, put, he breaks a stick and he, he puts the sticks in the water and the axe head begin to float. I see in that story from the servants, oh, no, master, he's asking the question, what am I going to do? God, do you really care? How can you let this happen? And then he calls the prophet over to do that. So I'm here to tell you this morning, family, that God cares. I, I, I need to, you for you to get this in your spirit because if not presently right now, maybe soon and very soon, you're going to be faced with the circumstances in your life, and you may be asking the question, God, do you really care? God, where were you when all of this happened? God, do you really care? One more story. I like this one here real quickly. Mephibosheth. Familiar with Mephibosheth? Mephibosheth, he was the, um, he was the grandson of Saul. The son of Jonathan. Jonathan was the best friend of David. They were like brothers. So here it happens at the age of five, after they just had killed Saul and Jonathan, uh, uh, Mephibosheth's nurse picks him up, runs with him, and as she running, he falls off of her and 
breaks his legs, and now he is lame from the age of five to, well, forever. And so let's fast forward some years now. So as, as the story goes from my reading my commentary that Mephibosheth is now well in age, he has a wife, and he has children. So imagine, imagine with me, imagine with me. Mephibosheth was once sitting in the house of a king. He was once living a royal life. And now that his dad and his grandfather has deceased, he's now living in Lodabar, probably in some place of depression or desolation, just mediocre life. Surely for so many years, I would have to think that maybe Mephibosheth was asking, God, do you really care about me? God, I was born into royalty. Now look at where I am now. And then we find as the story goes on that David remembered his covenant with Jonathan. And David asked the question, who is still alive from the house of Saul? And, and uh, 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 one of the servants from the Saul who was living, working for David, there's, there's still Saul's grandson still alive. Go get him. And here come Mephibosheth into the house of David. And David says, I will restore to you everything that's left behind for your father or your grandfather. God cares. What I see in these three stories is a couple of things. Number one, that, that everything, family, that, that God will give to us is not on our timing. Secondly, secondly, another thing I see from the story of Hannah, that there must be in our waiting on God or in us asking God do he really care, there must be some prayer put to with your asking, with your waiting. Number one, and with, with uh, uh, Elijah and the axe head floating, what I see in that is just simple faith in God. These three things, amongst others, and we'll get to more here as we continue on, should remind us and encourage us that God cares. No, 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 no. Again, as I said earlier, I want to, to magnify the bigness of God in your hearing this morning and not your problem. So let me give you just three, three or four attributes of God to show you how big God is. Number one, we should all know this. God is omnipotent. What does that mean? That he holds, he powerful, he's all powerful. Psalm 62, 11 says that all power belongs to God. Job recognized something in Job 9, 4. He says, God is wise in heart and mighty in strength. What am I trying to say to you? Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're asking questions about, whatever you're saying, God, do you really care? God is bigger than what you're currently dealing with or will ever deal with. God is stronger than any man on this earth. God is stronger than any situation on this earth. And you and I have to understand that if we're going to really understand that God cares, we can say, yeah, God cares. But do you live your life? Do you live your life with the mindset that God really cares? When, when, when you are, 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 are filled with anxiety, do you really feel that you believe that God really cares? No, no, you don't because... Listen, uh, uh, I will say like this, love, perfect love cast out fear, fear, where there's fear, there's an absence of faith. If you're fearing something or you have anxiety, you are lacking to some degree in your relationship with God that you can understand that God really cares for you and that he's doing something for you. He's working on your behalf. So you must understand that when you, when you spend, expend the time and the energy magnifying your problems, you are reducing God's bigness in your life. And as the one grows, the other shrinks. And now God is nowhere other than maybe on a Sunday morning in your life because you have reduced God. Or be rather me say it this way, because you have magnified your problems over the bigness of God. So God is omnipotent. Number two, God is omniscient. God is omniscient. Isaiah 46.10 says, I make known the end from the beginning. Omniscient simply means he knows everything. He knows everything. The psalmist says like this in Psalm 147 verse 5, says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. There is nothing that God don't understand or does not understand that's going on in your life. 
So when you say, yes, I do believe God cares, and when I'm trying, and as you're magnifying God versus your problem, understand this. Listen, this helps me so many times in my life that God knows what he's doing. There are things that you and I are asking God for, and God, in his perfect knowledge, infinite wisdom, knows that like, this is not the right time for this. And we have to come to a place, family, where we can understand that if God says no, not right now, then it's no, not right now. Marvin Sapp, as uh, you've seen this song a couple albums ago, he says, delayed, not denied. It, it, it doesn't mean that God will never give it to you. It just means he says not right now. So as we magnify the bigness of God, know that God is all powerful. He can do anything. He's able. Know that he's omniscient, that God has all knowledge. He knows what's going to happen two weeks from now. So if he gives this thing to you now, he knows what you're going to do next year because of where you are in your life. So he must hold that thing from you for a period of time so you can grow in him so that when he give it to you, you will honor him in what, he's, what you've been asking God for. Are, are y'all feeling me? Can, can y'all talk back to me a little bit? And this just nod some heads. Y'all so quiet, quiet, quiet. We Visitors, we make some noise in here. Not much, but we do make some noise. Y'all can talk back to me. Number three, number three. The th third thing I want to magnify before you're hearing this morning about the business of God is that God is sovereign. All right. I love to use that word. God is sovereign, people. Said it very simply, he can do whatever he wants to do. So you ask, you're asking God, God, do you really care? Say to yourself, yes, God cares for me and he is sovereign. God cares for me and he is omniscient. He knows all things. Yes, God cares for me and he is all powerful. So if you look at our text this morning again, he says, listen, humble yourselves in the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Let me give you real quickly, uh, quickly, 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 a few characteristics of God. I like this one here. Listen, listen, please get this in your spirit, family. Listen, this may be my only opportunity to speak to you again. Whether God takes me home or you never come back, I have to do what I got to take. So please hear me. Number one, some characteristics of God's care. Number one, God's care is constant. You know, I might care for you today, but if you rub me wrong next year, I thought you cared for me. Well, it wasn't until you backstabbed me. I don't care for you no more. But God's care is constant. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a spirit just came on me. If y'all could see my skin, y'all see chill bumps on my flesh. I, I, it's, you ever had the moment something just hit you and you're like, wow. Yes. Yes. God's care is constant. Every minute, every hour, every afternoon, every day to you and to others in your life, God's Care is constant. Another characteristic we need to understand about God's care that, it, oh, Jesus, thank you, man, he's so good. God's care is paternal. He don't just care for you as a holy God. He cares for you as a loving father. I take my sons, my two sons, and I do the same with my daughter. I take my sons, and, and every now and then I'll just kiss them on, the, on, the, on top of their head because, you know, they stay here. So I can just reach down and kiss them on their head. Or I'll just brew them in like, a, 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 you know, like a hen brew. There is church chicken. And I'll just love on them. They, 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 I love them with a paternal love because they, they are my children. I am their father. God don't just love us as some big, mighty God sitting on this holy throne. No, he loves us as a loving father. Or rather, he cares for us as a loving father. And if you can understand that God loves you or he cares for you as a father. Man, that'll just, just make you melt. It's like, wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. A father, that's what a father does. I'll hold you tight. God's care is constant and it's paternal. Number three, God's care is perpetual. 
if he loved you or if he cared for you in a certain way back in, in 2013, he'll care for you in the, in the same manner in 2016. His care for us, family, is perpetual. It never changes. It never ends. It never ceases. It never lessens. It never is. It, it, it doesn't even grow. It's constant with God because who He is. And you and I have to understand and acknowledge that God's care for me in such a way that it would never differ from one time over the next. Now, how we receive what God or how God's care is us, but His care is constant. It is the same. There, there, there's nothing, nothing, listen, it's nothing too big. It's nothing too minute about you or what's happening in your life that God does not care about. He cares about every detail of your life. He does so constantly. He does so paternally. He does so perpetually. And number four, he does so beneficially. The care that man gives to you may not, all be, may not always be beneficial to you. You may get some benefit out of it, but it may be more for man's beneficial. You, you, so I can care for my wife, but I may care for my wife because of my own selfish gain. God, no, no, no. God's care for you is beneficial. It's all for you. Yes. God says, you smile over there? <laughs> I saw Miss Judith smiling. I saw Brandon smiling. She must be smiling. You love me, don't you? Yes. All right. His care is beneficial. When God cares for you, it is designed, in many other ways, in, 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 in part, it is designed to work out for your benefit. It's already, come on, y'all know that. It's for your benefit. Finally, oh, I like this in here. Man, Jesus. Y'all had to excuse me. I just... Fourth, the fifth, the fifth characteristic of, of God's care. All right, hear me. This fifth characteristic is that God's care for you is special. If you are his child, he cares for you differently than he cares for someone who is not his child. Yeah, he cares for them in a general sense. But for you, you are his, you are called according to his purpose, have been justified and predestined. Oh, no, he loves you in a special way. I love my wife in a special way. <laughs> oh, Lord, here we go. My daughter, my oldest daughter, Kayla, she's like, Dad, you love Kira differently than you love me. No, no I don't. I love y'all all the same. Y'all all, all special to me. I, 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 I love them specially. It may look differently. The way God loves you specially may be different the way he loves me specially. But it's still special. <laughs> It, it, it doesn't negate the fact that it's special. You know, for something to be special, it has to be unique. Yes. God loves you in a, or I should say, God cares for you in a special and unique way. It's different from how he, he, he cares and loves for me. So these characters, come on, character with number one, that he's what? He's constant. Get that in your spirit, family. God's care for you is constant. It's paternal. Loving Father. It's perpetual. It's, and it's, it's like, it's like, how do you, I think Fred Hammond sings this song, How Do You Love That Way? God loves you or he cares for you. I use his words interchangeably. He cares for you in a special way. And when you can tap in to how God's care for you and not just believe it in word but believe it in your actions you begin to see wow this was god's special care for me you, you, uh, one one commentator uh, I, I like this one commentator uh, uh, phrase it as god being our caretaker any of you have to be a caretaker for someone 
And, and so, so when you, and you're, 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 at least for while you're on that job, if it's not a loved one, for that particular moment or hour, however it is, you are that person's caretaker. Everything that you are intended to do or do for that person is for their benefit. It's for their, uh, 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 for their well-being. And God, and you do so in a special way. The way you take care of your grandmother might be different when you take care of your auntie. We take care of your, 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 uh, uh, someone else because it's special to that person. And the same way that we can care for someone in the natural, in a special way, God cares for us in a special and unique way. Let me move on. Amen. So this raises for me three, three, two or three questions, and I'll try to quickly move through this here. How are we doing? Y'all, y'all, y'all all right? Y'all need to stretch and get up? No, okay, y'all good. All right. See, I'm a teacher, and God just has his way of giving me all these notes and say, well, God, I it's too much, and I don't want to overload, um, but, you know, just bear with me. But y'all getting this, all right? Yeah. Okay. So if you used to talk to someone, you say to someone, God cares for you. One question that may be asked is, why does God care for me? Assume that they've been through so much in their lives, Christian or non-Christian. A question that may be asked is, God, it is... You say God cares for me, yeah, but why does he care for me? Who, who, who am I? Look at all the bad stuff that I've done. Why should God care for me? Number one, listen, number one, he cares for you because you are his creation. You are his handiwork. Stand up, Terrence. Terrence, come on, center stage, center stage, center stage. Have a little, little fun. Come on, turn, turn, face the people, face the people. So, so, so. You know, you, you're not big like me. I'm not big neither, not anymore. You know? You're a little shorter than me. You got a little hair that's coming back and whatnot and stuff like that. But God created him special. This is God's handiwork. And I don't know about you, but if I have something special that I own, I'm going to care for that thing. I'm going to wash that truck up and make it nice, get those rims nice and shiny. God's care for you because you are his handiwork and no matter what you look like how you feel if God if you are his then he has a special care for you and that's one of the reasons family thank you Terrence why he care for you because you are his handiwork yes. <laughs> it says that you were uh, I think it's Psalm 139 that he, he fashioned you in your mother's womb you are special to him and because you are special to him God says I'm gonna care for that person yes. God cares for you why does he care because you are his handiwork. Second reason, second reason, I like this one. Uh, 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 he also cares for you because he has a purpose for you. I like to tell people this when I'm talking to them, especially from the, from the pulpit. Uh, 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 God, listen, God works in purpose. Do you hear me? Everything that God does from the cross or I should say from Genesis, take dominion, multiply, all the way through Revelation. God works for, through a, or for a divine purpose. So he cares for you, his handiwork, because he has in you a purpose. And if there is a purpose for you that he has created, of course he is going to care for you. He's going to care for that purpose. My wife and I have been married for 19 years. We are, I have a vested interest in this marriage. Four kids, more like, yeah, four kids, mortgage, all the other stuff that goes on with them. No, I'm going to care for this purpose. I don't think y'all know. Honey, did they get it? Why does God care for you, Corey? Because he has a purpose for you. Erica, he has a purpose for you. Jesus. Number three. Jesus. He cares for you because he wants the best for you. Excuse me if I start to tear up. I don't normally do that during sermon, but God is speaking to me now, and he's giving me just a peace, guys. It's just coming over me. Just, just, listen. He wants the best for you. And sometimes, bear with me, 
mother-in-law or grandma. Sometimes I look at my wife as she cares for her mother. But not. She want this. Give me this. I want more. Give me this. Like, no, you cannot have that. That's enough. She does it mostly, yes, always in part, because she wants the best for her mother. If we know that certain things will create some kind of medical condition in, my, in, in her mom, then why would she allow her to have that? Or if she knows, okay, one soda is good enough. You get two sodas, then you're going to start acting whatever. Okay. So, he say, so she says, she says, she says, she says, mama, in so many words, she's not saying it directly, mama, I want the best for you because I care for you, so I can't let you have that. Yes. That's what God does to us, family. He says, he says, he says, God is, he says, I, I, I want the best for you. Psalm 8, 4 says, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you would visit him or another translation would say that you would care for him. Oh, God, God, God loves you so much that he will hold back that lottery ticket you played last week because he knows it's going to tear you where they at? We ain't seen them in, we ain't seen them in a long time. Wow, what happened? Ever since they hit that lottery, they just been all over the place. What you say, Abby? What you say? God cares for you. Why does God care? Why does God care? Why does God care? He cares for you because He wants the best for you. Oh, one more, one more, one more reason. Come on, take this to heart. As as Cartier read our uh, mission statement earlier to share and demonstrate the message of faith, hope, and love, and to equip God's people to be messengers for Christ. So mostly when I'm preparing sermons, I have two things in mind. One, to encourage, edify, and the other is to equip to be messengers. So take this for yourself personally and understand it so you can go share this with someone else. Listen, listen. Number four, why does God care? Because your good is his glory. Don't you know the better you're looking, the more you can endure trials and suffering, it glorifies God? The more you can say, you know what? No, God, I didn't get what I want. I didn't get what I asked for, but God gave me this. And you can give God glory in that. Then it is glorifying him. So your good is his glory. Why does God care for you? Number one, come on, let's do this one number one. Why does God care for you? You are anywhere. You are his creation. Number two. Yeah, that's a purpose for you. Number three. And number four, your good is his glory. Mm. I'm going to kind of just speak this through here. Second question, it arises for me or raises for me. How does God care for me? How does God care for me? Number one, he watches over you. Dana, you was giving your testimony earlier. Driving in that rain. We got some more rain coming tomorrow. He's watching over you. Do they just see and unseen their protection all around? Get us on Angels, Richard Smallwood. Watching over me. Go to Psalm 91. Go read Psalm 91. He is watching over you. He cares for you by watching over you. He, number two, he cares for you by thinking of you. I already read Psalm 8 already. What is man? That is mindful. The son of man that you would visit him, that you would care for him. So, uh, uh, so he, he's thinking of God is always thinking of you. Even when you're not thinking of him, even when you're complaining, running your mouth, blah, 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 blah. I got to go back to work. It's Monday, blah, blah, blah. God said, I still care for them. I may have to discipline them, but it doesn't mean that I don't care for them. Third thing, third thing he does. He covers you, how he cares for you. He covers you with his grace. His grace. I remind the story of Paul's thorn. Paul prayed to the Lord three times, God, take this from me, take this from me, God, take this from me. He said, no, 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 I'm not going to take it from me. I'm going to care for you by giving you my grace. I want you to know that 
I don't, I, I can do this with your infirmity. No matter what your situation is, family, God says, look, I can still be God even in the midst of what you're suffering through. My grace will cover you and it will keep you in your weakness. I am made strong. What number are we on? Four or five? Four. Listen, listen. None. How does he care for you? He listens to your prayer. So I'm going out music, please, Brandon. Psalm 34, 15 tells us, says, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. Go back and read it. Write it down. Remember it in your, keep it in your hearing. Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears towards their cry. God cares. Psalm, I like this one here. Psalm 68, 19. It says God daily loads us with benefits. He's constantly and always caring for us. Now let me give you real quick, and then I will be done. Some hindrances, something that's going to hinder you from receiving and uh, uh, accepting God's care. Take the, care the, the caretaker example. I've seen times where the, the person that's being cared for is so rebellious or rambunctious and fighting that they can't receive the best care for them. Don't fight against God. I think the version, the, 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 the biblical way of saying it, don't kick against the... Don't do that. In order for you to really receive and uh, 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 receive God's care, know that something that's going to prevent you from acknowledging or saying, okay, God, you really do care for me, is you like, no, God, I don't want this. God, this is not how I want to be cared for. No, 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 no. Take the care that God gives you because he wants the best for you. Secondly, secondly, hindrances to receiving God's grace. <laughs> if you go back to our text this morning, verse number six is, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Come on, what's the opposite of humility? A hindrance to you and I receiving God's grace, I mean, sorry, God's care is pride. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going down and getting no, no uh, um, help from the government. No, I'm too prideful. No, that's God's care for you, maybe. If you've done all you can and God's saying you need to go do this and you're like, no, I'm too prideful to do that. Uh, no, 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 no. No, pride will hinder your ability to receive God's care. Remember, God is always constant. He is perpetual. He is paternal. It's you and I that have the problem. It is not God. God has not the issue. It's you and I. We're the ones wanted it a certain way. If we don't get it a certain way, then we don't see that as God's care. But we must learn, family, that pride, as we know, pride comes before a fall. Another thing we can do, or we should not do, or that will hinder us, stop complaining. Oh, Lord, I my toe hurt. <laughs> Remember what I said earlier. Part of our problem in this family is that we magnify our problem instead of magnifying God. So the more I am complaining, if that's all that's coming out of my mouth is complaints, 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 and, that, and not God, you're good, God, you're able, he's able to supply all my needs according to riches. If all that's coming out of my mouth is complaints, then I am hindering from receiving, or I'm being hindered from, being, from receiving God's care in my life. All I'm trying to say and get in your spirit this morning, y'all know where I'm going. God cares for you. I mean, just, let's just, let's just, Let's just make a, a, at least begin to make a resolution, a resolve in our spirits, in our hearts, that God cares. Touch yourselves. Say, God cares for me. Now say it like you really mean it. Say it. Cast your cares on him, for he cares for you.
Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you, God, for your many blessings in this house. For your word, God, that reminds us of your promises, that you care for us. God, that we are to cast all our burdens on you. God, that you may sustain us, and keep us, guard us, God, from hurting ourselves or being misled by our emotions, our heart, and our feelings. God, give us your peace. And give us your, 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 your grace, God, as we, uh, we move on through our life, this Christian journey. God, when that time comes that we are faced with that question again, do you really care? Quickly, Father, quickly remind us that your care is constant, it's perpetual, it's paternal, it's beneficial, and it's special. This I pray in Jesus' name.